What is up, guys? Doe here again, and I'm bringing you the long la long awaited tutorial on motion tracking, 3D motion tracking with Bougie and Cinema 4D. So, um, this is a cinematic that we're going to be using, and I'm only make it three seconds because it takes a boatload of time to render um, in Cinema 4D, and it would take a lot longer and for Bougie, and yeah. So, um, this you're gonna want to bring in your cinematic and you're going to want to just go through it make sure everything's fine go to full res um add to render queue and then you want to go best settings don't mess with the frame rate you keep it at the original frame rate and remember this frame rate 59.94 remember it and then go to lossless and instead of messing around with all these you go to png sequence and then you just click Okay, and then you want to want to make a new folder. I already have one made called uh, where is it? CT Camera Track. Um, so you're gonna want to make a folder, and then after you do that, you're gonna want to open. Uh, click on Cine Cine Two, and then um, it'll probably bring you to desktop, and you're gonna want to find your folder that you made, and then you want to click Save. But I'm gonna click, click I'm gonna click cancel because I already did this, and you're gonna click render, and I'll render it out in uh, individual pictures, and then it'll be done. So um, yes, I'm going to save. Let this exit out on me. All right, and then we're gonna open up Bushu. Ah, this will be a long tutorial, but. Bouju is opening. Any second it is opening. And what we're going to do is we're going to click, once it's open, import sequence. And you're going to want to find that folder that you made. So um, for me, it's in desktop. And then once you find the folder, you click the first one and then you click open. And then you'll have these settings. Make sure it's on free move and make sure you ha match the frame rate. Make sure it start frames at zero, step one to 179, and then click apply. And so it'll apply it, and for some reason, my Buju is dyslexic and doesn't know that I want it to have it in 59.94, so I'll click 59.94 again, and then click apply again, and then I'll click close. So now we roll through it, everything is fine, it's in 59.94. So we're going to track features. And if you have, actually, I think this should be good. If you've seen the After Effects tutorial that I made with the camera tracker, this is the exact same thing. Um, I think this might be a little faster, although this is uh, Bougie's its own software. I mean, Camera Tracker and After Effects is a really good plugin to have. And I personally don't really like 3D text too much, so I don't really like 3D motion tracking with Cinema 4D. So whenever I get the chance, I like to use Camera Tracker. But since this tutorial was so request, like requested by like 20 different people, um, decided to do it. So um, it's almost done. We're just waiting. Um, I'm freezing in my house. It's like I live in Texas, so it should be warm, but it's like. You, some of you might laugh at me for saying this, but it's like 40 degrees. But I live in Texas, so don't judge me. Um, waiting. We're waiting. And it is done! Alright. And so now click camera solve. And um, if you have a really jaggedy cinematic that like goes everywhere, you want to opt optimize camera path smoothness but I don't have to because mine's a really smooth slow cinematic so I'll just click start and it is done very quickly and we have all these all these dots just like with our um, camera tracker so what I'm going to do is or what we're going to do is move to the middle because um, when you're at the middle it's it's a good base good origin uh, for your um like what you're gonna, what your cinematic is gonna be like in After Effects. So we're gonna go to the middle, and then we're gonna scene our geometry. 
So click scene geometry and then click add coordinate from hint. And go click on where it says type, click, and then go to x-axis. So I'm going to cover this first. So if you know about a graph, um, x-axis is going across. So we're going to look for points that go across. So I'm going to click this point and then click on this point. Wait, see. So so if I'm on a Mac, I'll click this point, and then I'll command click that point. And connect to selected. Add coordinate from hint. We're gonna make sure that one, the one, eh, we're gonna make sure we use the one that is disconnected right now. And we're gonna go to Y axis, and then you're gonna want to command click the ones that you've selected before so that they go away. And then I'm going to command click this and this because Y axis is going up on your graph. So we're going up and then we're going to connect to selected add coordinate from hint we're going to go over z axis now so z is going its depth so it's going to be the depth in our um, motion track so I'm going to click this one and this one connect to selected and then I'm going to make it or add our origin and our origin is probably going to be like uh, can't decide so many choices I'm going to click that one and then we're going to connect to selected. So what, why we did all this was because um, we're telling Buju where the ground is, where the walls are, where the floor, like, well ground is floor, but where the walls are and how deep it is, where, and deep as in like where our text needs to be. So when we have it over here and we have the height up here, we're telling, our, we're telling Buju that we want our text in between this point and that point in between th this depth and no higher than this so it's going to be like generally around here so you want to update coordinate frame and then uh... wait what the heck oh crap hold up uh, z-axis i'm going to click origin now update core uh, okay we're good so once you update it and you can click on test object and it is not some random place and if we move it around it is pretty well motion tracked so uh, I'm just gonna click delete close and then we're gonna export our camera so um, pay attention here start frame you wanna make it zero um, you wanna make wait hold on first you wanna go to cinema 4d it's gonna say after effects you wanna click on it go cinema 4d Start frame to zero, scale scene by 100. That is very important. Don't ask me why, just do it. Because I honestly don't know why. But if you do it at like one, it'll be incredibly small. That's not what she said, but it'll be very, very small. So you want to find a file name, browse. Um, actually, I already have one. So um, I'll cancel. But you want to find a file name, and mine is mttut.7.4d. And then click save. I'm going to click cancel, but you want to click save. And then um, I'm going to quit Buju. So lose on save changes. And then open up Cinema 4D. I'm sorry if I'm rushing this. Okay, so you're gonna, this is going to pop up. Um, make sure it's at 10. And then textures checked, lights checked, and split, se split sections, selections is unchecked. Click OK. And then we're going to have this. And this looks really freaking weird. Um, <coughs> you see materials down here? Double click in the open space. Left click, double left click. And then double left click the material that it gives you. And then go make sure you're on color. Make sure it's checked. And go to texture, load image. And we're going to go to the CT folder. And we're going to load the very first one. We're going to click no. And then we are going to, um, how does this work again? I think you, yeah, you click on it, go to animation, and then you are going to go to, uh, wait, did I mess up? I think I did. Hold up, confused. Cancel, okay, well, I'm just going to give it a go. Calculate so that instead of giving us one frame, we are given, like, the PNG sequence. So after we calculated it, since 60 frames per second, which is pretty close to 59.94, and X out, and then we are going to want to make a background. So you want to hold uh, your left button where this like light is, and you want to 
let go on background. And then you're going to want to drag this material that we made onto the background, and then it'll make this. So if we scroll through, it is, we have our background. So um, after that, we are going to want to go to MoGraph text object. And you see we have our text. I'm going to rotate a little and fine tune it. Um, and I'm going to make it say something else. I'll make it say using AE. And then if we go through it, it's all motion tracked. And also I'll show you a neat little trick. What I do whenever I motion track is I click Command C, Command V, and then I make the depth to like 60-ish, and then I bring this. Oh, all right, there we go. Bring it back a little so that the text object number one is kind of in the middle-ish, so that when we go to or the the first text object, this is text object number one, so that the one with the 20 depth is in the middle. So when we go to text object number one, we can go to caps and we can go to fill it cap. And then when we, this is kind of like the RAM preview button. When we RAM preview it, it looks pretty cool. So um, I'm actually going to make a quick color. Really quick color. Color correction. My color correction. Um, that's a pretty good color. Add maybe a little reflect, reflection. Bring the blur up to 40. Maybe, no, all right. So this should look pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, baby blue. So um, I like it. So here are my render settings for this. Um, I'm going to go to output. Um, instead of current frame, you want all frames from zero to 180. So that's all good. You want to lock the ratio. And we're going to go to save. You want to save it as, um, what should we save it as? I'll call it tutorial and save it to my desktop, alpha channel, and then you want to go to format and you want to make it a quick time movie. And then you want to go to anti-aliasing and then you want to make it best instead of geometry and you want to make it animation instead of like still image. And I think we're all good. I mean, you can add a bunch of effects that'll make it look better, but because I don't want to spend too much time doing this, I'm going to have it like this. So after, you click this middle button and it'll render it, and I'm not going to wait here and, like, just watch it render because this would take forever. So um, I'll get back to you after this is done. Hey guys, I am back, and it finished rendering. As we can see, it is right here. Uh, I probably should have deleted the background, but I chose not to. So, um, yeah. Well, I'm going to open up my After Effects Snow, and I'm going to bring it in. And now, when we drag this text, or this text movie, on top, here's what we get. I will RAM preview it. All right, so it looks pretty good. Um, I am not an expert at Cinema 4D. I don't really know how to like keyframe and how to like make it come up off the ground and stuff like that. So um, I'll get better at it. I'll learn. But um, this is the only thing that I know how to do with Cinema 4D and After Effects is this type of motion tracking and how to make like um, stuff. So um, I'm pretty sure I'm near 15 minutes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it was requested by a lot, so I know that most of you guys will, uh, for the most part. Um, subscribe for more tutorials. I'm almost at 300 right now. I think now that 
while I'm recording this, I'm at 295. So, um, this has been Doe, and this has been my um, After Effects to Bougie to Cinema 4D tutorial. Thanks for watching, and leave some feedback. Bye-bye.